Hey guys, so we are now going to have a look at sigma notation. Now, sigma notation is very often an uh, uh, intimidating topic because of the unknown nature of it. You've probably not seen it before, and it's a Greek letter, so that's where the expression comes from that maths is Greek to me, okay, uh, because it used so many Greek letters. The Greek letter sigma stands as um, in English would be the S and stands for sum and what we're going to do is we're going to use it to indicate um, summing up a number of terms and for that let's just understand a few elements in the sigma notation okay first of all the index the index is written at the bottom of the sigma notation and here we use an i uh, but it can be a k and it's equal to a value that k is going to assume in the beginning so or i or whatever the index value is but in a can be let's say one or two or seven it's just the first value it's going to take and inside the sigma is some formula containing your index k so we can have for example 2k minus one just some formula that we call the sum function and that's the value we're going to substitute my index into um, and then we're going to just go through the natural numbers starting at the value that that it assumes first so if it starts with k equal to 1 then it's going to be 2 and it's going to be 3 so we're going to jump in ones all the way up to whatever this top value suggests so that's the upper limit the upper limit can be something like uh, let's keep it small so I can use an example 4 okay in other words k is going to start at 1 go to 2 3 and 4 and each time we're going to substitute it into the sum function and add them together in the end okay so let's do that for this example okay so we start with one so two times one minus one plus two times now k um, jumps in a uh, in one to the next value which is two minus one plus now the next value oh next value k assumes is 3 so we go from 1 2 3 and 4 so 2 times 3 minus 1 plus and the final one 2 times 4 minus 1 and there we go if we add up all of those 2 times 1 is 2 minus 1 is 1 plus 2 times 2 is 4 minus 1 is 3 plus 2 times 3 is 6 minus 1 is 5 and the last one will be 7 okay and this if we add uh, them up all together we get 16 so in other words the value of this sum function or that sum expression is equal to 16 well there's one example let me look at two more in this example a very similar thing all I go I starts at 1 and ends at 5 so let's go through them this time I'm not going to substitute I'm just going to write the value 3 times 1 is 3 plus 1 is 4 plus 3 times 2 now, i takes the value of 2, 6 plus 1 is 7, plus 3 times 3 is 9, plus 1 is 10, 3 plus 4 is 12, plus 1 is 13, 3 times 5 is 15, plus 1 is 16. There we go, and this one, if we add all of these together, um, we get 20, 20, 40 is 50, get a value of 50 okay here's one more example again I'm just going to substitute and write down the values okay 2 times 3 to the power of 3 uh, minus 1 is 2 3 to the power of 2 that is 9 times 2 is 18 plus 3 to the power of 4 this time so 2 times 3 to the power of 4 minus 1 is 3 times 3 to the power of 3 3 to the power of 3 is 27 times 2 is 54 plus now 2 times 3 to the power of 5 we're at 5 minus 1 which gives me 4 3 to the power of 4 is 81 times 2 is 162 okay, and finally 3 to the power of 6 minus 1 gives me 2 times 3 to the power of 5 3 to the power of 5 is 243 times 2 is 486. 
and when you add up these numbers you get 720 cool I'm sure that gives you a basic idea of the long way to do it so here's a few shortcuts okay now these are probably just going to confuse you and uh, if you want to you can pause it and read through it see if you understand it um, but I'm basically just going to give you the idea if I've got the sum of a constant number let's say the constant 2 then I'm going to add 2 every time depending on how many times whether I is goes from 1 to 10 that means I'm just going to go I1 my answer will be 2 I2 my answer will be 2 I3 I'll add another 2 okay all the way up to 10 so I'll actually just have 10 twos or 2 times 10 so that's what this first one says is that when I sum up a constant number that has no index in it I can just multiply that by the number of um, terms I'm going to sum up in the end and this gives a formula for how many terms there's going to be but you just go and count them or work them out intuitively or in your head okay next if I've got two sum functions inside my formula in s as a sum function there's two functions with i so for example 2 to the power of 2 times i plus 2 to the power of i I see you've got two terms inside then I can if I want to split it up into two sum fun sums uh, separately so I can have the sum of the one plus the sum of the other okay which just means I treat the two terms inside the sum function I treat them separately okay that is th what that next one is saying then we have that if I have the sum of some function but that function of i is multiplied by a constant so for example this i is being multiplied by 2 that 2 is going to be a common factor in every term because every term is going to be multiplied by 2 so I might as well take him out of the sum and multiply him in front of the sum okay so that in the end I'll have 2 times 1 plus 2 plus 3 instead of multiplying every term while I'm uh, calculating it I can multiply it at the end okay so it means that I can take out any constant that is being multiplied with my function and then finally this is just a very useful uh, formula that the sum of the first n natural numbers can be calculated by that formula basically it's saying you take the first number which is 1 when i is equal to 1 the first number is 1 you add it to the last number which is obviously n okay so that's a standard one take the first number add it to the last number and multiply it by half the number of terms so if I start at 1 I'm going to have n terms so half the number of terms so and, and that can work for every, any arithmetic series which just means I'm jumping in in the same unit every time to my next term um, for example these I add the first and the last one which gives me 7 and I multiply that by half the number of terms. I've got four terms here, so times two, and I get 14. Two and five, seven, three and four is also seven. That's why I, I pay them. That's why I multiply with half the number of terms. Okay, and that gives me 14. So that does work in, in at least uh, one empirical um, example. Uh, but this is just a very useful formula take the first number plus the last number and multiply by half the number of terms cool let's see how we can use this to solve these two questions much uh, maybe uh, somewhat simpler so in this one we'll first just simplify this to get all the constants separate so we've got 3 to the power of k times 3 to the power of negative 1 remember a negative exponent means I'm instead of multiplying with 3 I'm actually dividing with 3 so I'm going to sum from 3 to 6 so we've got 2 and multiplying by 2 and dividing by 3 as a common factors of 6n equal to 3 and then we've just got 3 to the power of k see my interior of that my sum function has simplified significantly so that I have 2 over 3 and inside I just have 3 to the power of 3 plus 3 to the power of 4 plus 3 to the power of 5 plus 3 to the power of 6 
And since this is the same question as before, I'll still get 720. It might just be somewhat quicker way of calculating it. Okay, but this one is probably uh, uh, not as much easier. However, let's take this one, but instead of going to fif 5, let's go to 50. Let's make it way too difficult to add up every turn, substituting and adding up. Okay, and here we see we can separate. There's a plus in between the terms, so I can separate them into two. I can get 3i, and I can get the sum of 1. Now, technically, we should keep our index. That is what you have to do, uh, but sometimes I'm going to neglect it for time's sake save some cap on your internet as you're watching these videos. Okay, anyways, here I can see once again I can take out a 3 as a common factor. So 3, and I've got the sum of i starting i starting at 1 to 50. Plus, here I've got the sum of a constant. I'm going to add up 1 for 50 times. So I might as, just, might as well just multiply 50 with 1. Okay, and here we go 3 times Okay, 1 plus 2 plus all the way up to 50. And there we go. Here's what I explained before, that if, I've, if I'm jumping in the same unit every time, I can add the first and the last term and multiply by half the number of terms. Okay, so first term is 1, last term is 50, so 51. Multiplied by how many terms are there? There's 50 terms, so multiply by a half of 50 plus 50 and that answer is okay we can use our calculator just find the answer and I find it as 380 uh, 3875 okay I know I'm going fast um, for those of you that get it great for those of you that don't get it rewind me you can do that the cool thing about these videos you can rewind me and look at that again okay Let's look at some exam type questions. Okay, here's a, a question in which we need to understand both logarithmic laws as well as the sum function. Okay, so here we go. It tells me to add up those values, and I can do so. I can take the long way around. But I can also just recognize that I can multiply the end to the front. Okay, so there's many ways of doing it. I'm going to choose what I think is the simplest way. So let's just say the sum of n times log of x. I just multiplied the exponent inside of the logarithm to the front, and that is that is part of the logarithmic laws. Now we can notice that here we have a factor that do, that doesn't contain the um, index, which means it's actually a constant. Okay, we're trying to solve for x. But at this point, it, it it doesn't need to be inside that sum function, so we just multiply it at the front. It's a common factor in every term. So that in front, we've got, for n going from 1 to 3, of n is equal to 12. And now this is very simple to solve. 1 plus 2 plus 3, because n starts at 1, 1 plus, now n is 2, 2 plus, now n is 3. So 1 plus 2 plus 3 is 6. So we get that log of x multiplied by 6. Just take note, the 6 is not inside the logarithm. We took the logarithm, uh, that it's a factor, it's different. Now I can divide both sides with a 6, and I get that log of x is equal to 2. So let's write that in the exponential form. Remember the base is 10. So the base, exponent, and answer. Okay, so my base is 10, my exponent is 2, my answer is x, and that means x is 100. Okay, that was one example. Here's another exam type question. The sum of k starting at 0 of 2 over 5k. And here we notice again that there's a 2 is a common factor which can come out and inside we can now, oh, we can write it a little bit simpler I think as 5 to the power negative k. Okay, since I'm dividing with a 5 to the power of k I can write it ex its exponent as negative instead. So here what we see is we've got 2 and we've got 5 to the power of 0 
plus 5 to the power of negative 1, plus 5 to the power of negative 2, plus 5 to the power of negative 3. Okay, and when we calculate that answer, we get 3, 1, 2 over 125. Okay, again, I am going a little bit fast. Pause the video, follow the steps, make sure you understand. Cool.